deepest truths are found in fictions. And sometimes those lit by the brightest light cast the darkest shadows. In my sojourn through this labyrinth of hidden meanings, dark sayings, and parables of the Logos, I sometimes open tomes shunned by other souls. In these grimoires, these secret books, on these pages penned by haunted souls, I sometimes find treasures disguised in demon ink. In the Magus, in Agrippa, in a Bremelin, in the alchemical works that mask their truths and symbol, in the book of the names of the dead. By the testimony of the mad Arab, I have uncovered treasures hidden by clever pens, sages who hid the light in books of shadow. Out of the wisdom of ancient Persia and Sufi mysticism, from the old beliefs of the Yazidis, I believe that's pronounced correctly, I'm really not sure, Yazidas, Yazidis, these are the people of the book, the ageless Kurds. I know most of you, my listeners in the West, you don't know about the antiquity of these people. I happened upon one learned in the Arcanum of the Draconian Gnosis. Pinned in seer's ink, this man wrote a text, a poem of great power. This poem is called Kutub. Kutub means axis of the world or the point, a place known anciently as the middle of the earth. This mystic, this genius, he is dead now. But his legacy is this amazing poem, a treasury of occult truths. His name is Andrew Chumbly, and you will find herein many of the teachings of archaics spread throughout this verse of Ketub. In Ketub, we find that our world is not what we think. So deep is this poem that I have provided you a legend that explains many of the words and terms and it's in the description box and the pinned comment. If you, if you read the legend and then listen to this poem again, your mind will then be open to what this poem is truly conveying. On the surface, it's a work of beauty. But beneath the surface, it's profound. Here lie the remnants of a book, once written by no mortal hand, once sealed within a silver vault, and lost amidst the desert sand. The eon soul hath forged a key to open wide this book to thee, and show thee that faith hath not planned. To thee, Azran Akarana, all holy books I come to burn, save this which by thy quill I write, all else to ash and dust will turn. The nuptial flame of truth and lie shall quicken mine own ink to dry and seal the spell in Kyder's urn. The prophet of the peacock quill hath drunk God's blood from out of the cup of Iblis and the blessed few that with Eve's brood refuse to sup. Ye children of fair Lilith born, come tread the path of blame and scorn, for you from hell have fallen up. Look thou far into the waters, the mirror wide and pure and clear, and feign a deep and dream-filled sleep to leave ajar thine waking ear. And as you listen to each word, thou shalt in flesh that which is heard, the double song of old Kadir. Before the limit of the truth, the infinity of the lie, before the mask it ever was wrought, when first the watcher's eye met eye, before the hand first touched the clay, a voice from silence chanced to speak, yet who spoke, thou or I? Then the answer to the question, 
the secret told to none but thee. Behold the starry lock Katoob. Behold the peacock angel's key. The circle of the year is done. The oath-bound cup lieth o'erturned. By whose hand they answered we. The running wine hath stained the book. As ink thy blood is spilt for me. Yet time and fools all words erase, but not the secret told to thee. Hear the expanse of endless night, where stars like bloodied footprints mark the angel's path by the shoreless sea. By attraction to this moment, the thought of hand and eye as one, each course divert, each care forgot, on pathways lost is fortune won. In straying wide is wisdom found to turn the thread and tie the knot, which by no hand may be undone. Silence veileth the sphinx smile within the hollow idol's breast to break the god's own wooden robe and add it to the phoenix nest. The secret that is called the lie, there is no truth but here is all not to deceive, but yet to test. The daughters of pale Lilith stand upon the letters of this book, and with my brother's guide thy hand to once more amid these pages look. All men are welcome here to try to chance their lives or else to die, mere men upon God's fishing hook. All ancient books of lore shall burn, and then will countless wise men shout, their tongues the flames outstretched to cry, a prayer to put the fire out. But one sage will silent be, and in the flames my words will see, the truth within is truth without. The hell of those who do but speak, whose tongues but move in air and vain, their voices stifle heart and thought, who live in to speak their lives again. Their prayers are curses that repeat, their sins and thus their silence cheat. All words are lies, yet truth sustain. I have provided but a fourth, maybe not even a fifth, of the entire length, the 72 verses of Ketub. I think I provided nine or ten of them here. It's 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 va it's long. It can be found online. I must here quote Taylorson, the genius of the Celtic bards, when he wrote, "I am a bard. I do not vouchsafe my secrets to slaves." And in following this ancient tradition, I offer only a piece of the Ketub here, penned by Andrew Chumley. The rest is for you to find. It's available. But those who seek more than just a pretty verse, I'll offer a key to deciphering this amazing corpus of occult knowledge. You can find this legend in the, in the description box or the pinned comment. And in honor of the tradition Brother Chumbly has pinned, I have not provided any of my links in either the description box or the pinned comment but reserve this space for this most remarkable man.